goodness me, it is hot today. So I'm gonna get through this video as quickly as I can before I melt into a great big puddle. I saw something just recently which made me smile and I'm probably gonna get the phrasing of it completely wrong, but it essentially said that there are two very distinct hobbies. There is the art of buying books and then there is the art of reading books. And I think that I'm fast becoming a person who leans more towards the buying of books than the reading of books but I just cannot seem to help myself. I love the feeling of going into a bookshop and picking a book up and reading the back and just imagining the adventure that I could have if I brought it home and decided to read it. It's becoming something of a habit. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it is your first time here. My name is Jess. Today's video is going to be a book haul and as I mentioned it's really really warm today so I'm going to try and get through this as succinctly and as quickly as I can. I have just under 20 books scattered on the floor next to me so without further ado let's jump in and I will share with you some of my most recent purchases. First up we actually have a trilogy. I think it's just called Daughter of Smoke and Bone. So the first book is Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. The second book is Days of Blood and Starlight. And then the final book is Dreams of Gods and Monsters. And first of all, let's just admire the stunning, stunning covers. These are actually 10th anniversary editions and they are just beautiful. So I have actually read Strange the Dreamer and its follow-up Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor and I thought that they were great so I'm really excited for this trilogy. As I said these are 10th anniversary editions. The keen-eyed among you may already know that I have a copy of Daughter of Smoke and Bone but I didn't have the other two and I just adore these covers so I've given that one away to charity and now I have the whole trilogy in these beautiful, beautiful editions. So this is YA Paranormal Fantasy. We are following a young girl who is an artist, she's called Karoo, and she has been raised by monsters. And something is brewing and Karoo basically has to make a choice between remaining in the relative safety of her human life or going into the war-torn place known as Elsewhere and the rub is that Elsewhere may hold the key to who Karoo really is. One of the things I really loved about the Strange the Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares duology was Lainey Taylor's writing style. It's very lyrical, it's very beautiful, she just absolutely creates a stunning world and stunning characters so I do have high hopes for this trilogy. I feel like it would be famous last words to say that I hope to get to it soon but I do hope to get to the trilogy soon because I just think I'm going to love it. Then we have Hollow Pox, The Hunt for Morrigan Crow. This is middle grade fantasy and it's the third book in the Nevermore series and I have thoroughly enjoyed books one and two. So this is about our protagonist Morrigan Crow. In the first book she is whisked away to the magical land of Nevermore where she undergoes a series of challenges in order to be welcomed into the wondrous society. And obviously I can't say too much about what happens in book two or even really how book one ends but suffice to say that with each new book she has faced a new challenge and I imagine that this book is going to be no different. One of the things that I really like about these books is Morrigan herself. She's just a very wholesome main character that you can really root for. She's very flawed, she's very realistic but you can get really get behind it and you just really root for her to succeed in what she is doing. So not going to talk too much about this because obviously it's the third book in a series uh, but yeah just one that I'm looking forward to picking up. Next we have Dark Tides by Philippa Gregory. This is the sequel to Tidelands which I recently read, I think I read it last month actually, I'm all a muddle. Um, I will leave the link to my most recent reading wrap up in the description box down below because I did read it last month Jessica, you do know that. So this is historical fiction and Dark Tides picks up basically where Tidelands ends. So it's 1670, Eleanor and her daughter are going to London and I talk a lot in 
my reading wrap up about the book so if you want more thoughts then do go over there but yeah essentially this is about the rise and fall of our main character Eleanor and her family so at the beginning of Tidelands they're very much living on the edges of their community they are basically scraping an existence and very much living in poverty something happens to change their fortunes and the story unfolds so I don't know how or where Philippa Gregory is going to take the book next the ending of Tidelands was really quite something and made me really excited for where the book could potentially go where the story could potentially go so I do have high hopes for this I've said that about quite a lot of the books <laughs> that I've shown you so far I think I'm gonna say it about a few more but yeah really looking forward to seeing how she develops the story and develops the characters and what she's going to do with the storyline so yeah just one that i'm pleased to have and i will obviously get to it when i get to it then we have the sight of you by holly miller i actually saw this recommended on instagram and it isn't the type of book that i would normally pick up but i was so intrigued by the review that i read that i thought i would give it a go so this is romance with a sci-fi element to it it's the story of joel and callie Joel basically has the ability to, he has visions about the futures of people he loves, both good and bad. And Callie is struggling to get over the passing of her best friend. She desperately wants to live a life that is bigger, that is more adventurous, that's spontaneous, but she just feels lost and doesn't quite know how to do that. Joel and Callie meet, they begin a relationship and I think all is going well until, until Joel has a vision of how their relationship ends and so our story unfolds. Um, I have heard that this is incredibly heartbreaking and as I say it's not necessarily a book that I would normally pick up and I guess it's going to be the age-old exploration of is it better to have loved and lost they're never loved at all. That's kind of the vibe that I'm getting from the premise. So we shall see. As much as we all know that I can be a huge wimp, I am also partial to a good psychological thriller in the summer. And so I have picked up The Book Club by C.J. Cooper. And obviously, or no, should I say personally, with this type of book I like to go in knowing as little as possible so my understanding of the basic premise is that a newcomer moves to a sleepy village and starts a book club and then systematically reveals the deepest darkest secrets of all the book club members through the books that they choose to read um, and one of those secrets is murder da, da, da. that's all I know that's all I want to know I'll report back in due course. I must have been in the mood for trying some romance when I bought these books because a few of them I bought at the same time and one of those was A Witch in Time by Constance Sayers. So this is a romance time travel novel about a woman who has been bound tragically to her lover since the late 1800s and she has lived various lives under various names but always with tragic endings to her stories and so we're following I don't know if she's only lived four lives or if we're following four of the lives that she has lived one in 1895 one in 1932 one in 1970 and then in 2012 and I think in her life in 2012 she has the potential to break the cycle that she is stuck in I just thought that this sounded like a really interesting concept i'm intrigued to see how the historical elements will blend into our 2012 more present day timeline how those historical timelines will be represented but yeah i just thought that it sounded really interesting again just want to add to my i know always expanding tbr but yeah i was intrigued enough to pick it up next up we have whistle in the dark by emma healy this was actually my book club's pick for the month of july and i have already read this so i will try not to give too much away in explaining it so essentially we are following mum jen whose 15 year old daughter lana goes missing for four days whilst they are on a retreat in the Peak District and when Lana is eventually found she claims that she can't remember where she was or what happened to her and so our story unfolds. I'm 
not going to unpack it any more than that because I will talk about it in much more detail in my end of the month wrap up so do watch out for that but that is the basic premise loved it didn't like it you'll have to see okay I know I've said that I'm looking forward to quite a few of the books that I have hauled already obviously I must be otherwise I wouldn't have bought them but this next book came up when I was searching for books that were similar to Circe and I don't know if I can contain myself so it is The Mercies by Kieran Millwood Hargrave I'm just going to read you what it says on the back because I'm just very very excited the storm comes in like a finger snap Winter 1617. The sea around the remote Norwegian island of Vardo is thrown into a vicious storm. A young woman, Marin, watches as the men of the island out fishing perish in an instant. Vardo is now a place of women. Eighteen months later, a sinister figure arrives. Absalom Cornet has been summoned to bring the women of the island to heal. With him travels his young wife, Ursa. In her new home and in Marin, Ursa encounters something she has never seen before independent women. But where Ursa finds happiness, even love, Absalom sees only a place flooded with a terrible evil, one he must root out at all costs. And then it's just full of comments like beautifully intimate, strong characters, powerful, gorgeous settings, immersive, and I'm just so flipping excited. I've just hit something on my door. That's how excited I am. Okay, another book that I am, again, very excited to pick up. This time it is A Time for Mercy by John Grisham. I am a huge John Grisham fan, it must be said, but I have been somewhat underwhelmed by his more recent releases. I just don't think that they have the same, uh, the same pizzazz, I want to say, which is not the right word, but that's kind of what I'm getting at, the same wow factor or jaw-dropping moments as his earlier works did. But with this one, we are going back to 1990 and we are reconnecting with a character called Jake Briggins, who you may know if you're a Grisham fan, was in A Time to Kill and also Sycamore Row, I think. I want to say Sycamore Row. So in this book, as I said, it's set in 1990 and Jake is representing a 16 year old boy who is on trial for the murder of his mother's boyfriend who also happened to be a police officer and like with A Time to Kill, this is not a book about discovering who did it or who really did it but more a look at the ethical reasons behind whether the killing was justified or not, you know, what's really going on. We're going on an exploration with our characters that maybe not everything is as it seems. There's no doubt going to be some to and fro between the local people, probably falling on one side and not the other, which is again very similar to A Time to Kill. I'm very much, very much hoping that this one is reminiscent of Grisham's earlier books because I just think some of them are absolutely fantastic and I would really really like to be able to pick one up again that is on the same level as those so we shall see. This next book was absolutely 100% upsold to me by the bookseller in Waterstones so it better be as good as they claim. That is The Appeal by Janice Hallett. So this is a murder mystery thriller set in a sleepy little town featuring an amateur dramatics club. Basically someone was murdered, someone went to prison for the murder but two law students have been assigned the case to investigate because they suspect that the person who went to prison was not actually the killer and the killer still roams free. So it says on the front, one murder, 15 suspects, can you uncover the truth? And I think the interesting, no, not that I think, I know the interesting thing about this book is that it's all told through text exchanges and letters and emails, so all through correspondence. And um, yeah, the bookseller said that it was a very interesting concept, that it didn't necessarily sound interesting in its format, but it was very, very clever. It was very interesting to try and work out who done it, and she thoroughly enjoyed it. So we will see. Next up we have Law by Alexandra Bracken. This is my current read and it was a book that I mentioned in my mid-year freakout which was my last video and I already crumbled and I'm thoroughly thoroughly enjoying this by the way. I'm not very far in but I'm absolutely loving what I have read so far so 
I was obviously correct. So this is urban fantasy about Greek gods who are sent to earth every seven years to walk the earth as mortals and the ancient bloodlines who hunt them in order to take their power and gain eternal glory for themselves and for their houses. Um, our main character is a young girl called Law who is the last representative of her house and she has tried to remove herself from what is called the Aegon, this seven year cycle um, but events conspire against her and she has, at the point that I'm at now, as I say I'm not very far in, the point that I'm at now she has found herself thrown back in, dragged back in to the mix and things are going on and it's very exciting and I'm loving it and I'm not going to say too much more. I hope that it continues and then it ends as strongly as it has started because yes, I really really feel like this could be a five star read. I almost don't want to say that but at the same time I'm feeling good about it. Then we have two middle grade picks. First is The Forest of Moon and Sword by Amy Raphael. This says on the back, Art loves only three things in life, her mother, her horse and her sword. So when her mother is taken one cloudless night, accused of witchcraft, Art mounts her horse and chases after her. As she journeys through the wild forests of Scotland and England, she will use her mother's herbal recipe book and natural magic to guide her. But will she spot the signs from the omens? Can she reach her mother? In time. I actually bought this one for Meg but um, yeah I think that it sounds really really interesting I think it'll be a really quick read um, and I do like to pick up middle grade every now and then also this one is signed by signed by the author which is very very cute and then the next middle grade that we have is Glass Heart by Catherine Orton. So this is set just after the end of the Second World War. We are following our main character Nona who is an orphan. She's lost both her parents and she now lives with her uncle and he replaces stained glass windows in war-torn buildings so she travels around with her uncle and then some kind of dark magic threatens to take her uncle from her unless Nona can stop it. This just sounds like it's going to be one of those really fantastic, whimsical, magical adventure stories. Again, I picked it up for Meg. I think that she is really going to enjoy it, but I am intrigued enough and I do occasionally like reading middle grades, so I'll keep my eye on it and it may be that I decide to pick it up in the near future. And then finally we have the three Taylor Jenkins read books that I picked up in order to buy and own all of her backlist. These are all contemporary romances. So first up we have After I Do which is about Lauren and Ryan and their marriage has essentially reached breaking points and so they decide in an unconventional effort to save it that they're going to take a year off, a year apart and they can basically do whatever they want except for contact one another and so our story unfolds. Honestly even thinking about this concept and I haven't even read it makes my heart hurt a little bit because even if I wasn't with James in a romantic sense he is still my best friend and I honestly can't imagine not being able to talk to him every day. I just think that would be really really hard. Um, but yeah, I'm really on a Taylor Jenkins read kick at the moment so I'm really pleased to have these three books. I will definitely be getting to these soon so there is that one. And then we have One True Loves. So this is about Emma who marries her childhood sweetheart and is essentially living her best life until her husband Jesse goes missing in a helicopter flying over the Pacific and then several years later Emma is moving on with her life, she is now engaged and Jesse reappears and claims that he has been spending the last few years desperately trying to get back to her. So Emma now has a husband and a fiance and I guess has to go on a journey of who she is, who her one true love is, if we only ever have one true love, etc, etc. And then the final one is Forever Interrupted and this is about Elsie who goes on a whirlwind romance with a guy called Ben and they elope and nine days after they are married Ben is killed in an accident and at the hospital Elsie runs into Ben's mother, so essentially her mother-in-law who had no idea that she existed. 
and again our story unfolds so yeah really really looking forward to the three of these as i say i'm really on a taylor jenkins read kick at the moment so I almost certainly will pick up a couple of these if not all of them before the end of 2021 for sure so there we go there are all the books that i have recently picked up do let me know if you have read any of them if you think i should prioritize any of them obviously i've already read whistle in the dark and i'm currently reading law but aside from that do let me know your opinions i always love to chat more with you in the comments for now thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this video please give me the thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you aren't already i hope that you are all keeping safe and well take care and i'll see you all soon